Hi, I'm Bob D'Amico from Vitrek, and today we're going to be talking about the Vitrek PA900 series power analyzers. Vitrek's PA900 series power analyzers are the industry's easiest to use. Equipped with a 7-inch color touchscreen, the PA900 series enables users to quickly and easily set up their configurations, generate custom screens, set up efficiency calculations using our custom VPAs or virtual power analyzers and configure their interface preferences. The newest units to the series, the PA910 and PA920, offer expanded power analysis options. The PA910 provides improved basic accuracy of 0.045% and the PA920 offers basic accuracy down to 0.024% while the PA900 continues to offer a respectable 0.05%. The PA910 and PA920 also offer measurement bandwidths sufficient to handle waveforms up to 5 MHz. All PA900 series units come pre-configured in either 1, 2, 3, or 4 channel versions. Users can also custom configure their units from 1 to 4 channels with a variety of application specific input cards. The user also has the ability to swap input card types and add or subtract channels as they choose on their own without having to send the unit back to the factory. Design engineers are under constant pressure to increase efficiency and reduce excess product power consumption down to the last milliwatt. Why not give the Vitra PA900 series power analyzer a try? You may be quite surprised at the level of performance you receive at a very competitive price point. Let's take a more detailed peek at the PA900 series unit, focusing on the user interface and a variety of screens, all easily accessible and super easy to configure. This is the PA900, and we're going to go over some detailed screens so you can see the flexibility and ease of setup of the unit. I'm going to start with my system configuration key. And this gives you, at the top, a summary of all the cards that are inserted in the unit. And once that is all set, that is uh, established and set up, all the settings that we're, talking, that we're going to be talking about can be saved in a bunch of different locations to recall them for future use. Also have the ability to change my system preferences, which change the way the data is, look, is looked at and presented to the user. I can come in and also change my interfaces. Uh, the PA900 has a variety of interfaces, comes standard with RS-232, USB, and LAN or Ethernet. GPIB is an option. If you choose the GPIB option, all three of the other interfaces disappear. I can set my clock, and I can also do some zeroing out of my test leads if I need to. Next button I'm going to talk about is the actual channel setup. As you can see, there are uh, listed are the channels that are installed in the back of the unit, and simply by toggling, I can turn the channels on and off. I can scale the channels if I decide to do that, and I can also auto range the channels. As far as my measurements go, there are different ways, different filtering techniques that I can use to filter my data. I can choose to look at, for example, 50 or 60 hertz, which is my mains power coming out of the wall. We also have settings for avionics instruments, uh, voltage only, current only, and so on. Uh, my bandwidth can be determined. I can filter out how much of my band I want to be able to look at. My harmonics can be dialed in anywhere from 50 to 100, all the way up to 500 harmonics. My data, I can decide to, if I want to look at AC and DC data simultaneously, AC data only, or DC data. My response time is how fast the unit is actually sampling and presenting the data. In most cases, the faster you sample, the, um, the accuracy suffers just a little bit. The slowest reading is going to give you your most accurate readings. We even have the amount of digits that are presented as a, a, a complete reading, and you'll see this on one of the screens I'll be talking about in just a minute. 
I can change my wiring scheme. I can do single phase uh, on all four channels. I can do a combination of three phase three wire, three phase four wire. If I have a situation where I, have, I may have a three phase motor I need to monitor. And finally, um, using our VPAs or virtual power analyzers, we have the ability to monitor efficiency. So for example, let's say I'm using two channels and I have a DC to DC converter. I will assign one of my virtual power analyzers to the input channel. I'll assign one of the other channels to the output. Then I can come in and I will, again, I'll show you where the efficiency shows up. But using that efficiency button gives you the ability to uh, monitor different points, however many points that you have, and you can, you can measure efficiency at different points in a complete system. Okay, now that we've spoken about the, uh, the setup of the unit, I'm going to go into some of the specific uh, screens that you will see. Um, <clears throat> and I'm basically going to go just go across the screen up top. And once I hit that channel button, I have the ability to look at any one of the individual channels, my virtual power analyzer, which is used for efficiency, and more importantly, my efficiency calculations. Now, I don't have any data here right now because I don't have enough channels populated with that. I can also customize my screen. So I can take my power data and I can take some of these parameters, even some parameters that do not, that do not show up on this screen, and I can put them up on my screen. We have a, a simple screen editor program uh, that's Excel based and it allows you to come in here, change the fonts, change the parameters you want to look at, and they even change the colors of the parameters you're looking at. Our harmonic screen gives you the ability to look at voltage, current, or power harmonics, and um, of any channel, I have the ability to look at either a linear or a logarithmic scale. I can look at up to five different bands of values, which will give you a lot, lot more resolution when you're actually looking at those. Um, <clears throat> and the other thing that's real nice is the unit is actually looking at from the first up to the 500th harmonic. I have a digital readout here, but for example, if I wanted to look at my 300th harmonic, I can scroll down by hitting that down arrow, or there's a little yellow indicator here, and if I could grab that indicator and slide it over, my values are now changing over here. So I can look at any one from the first to the 500th harmonic by simply grabbing my screen and, and moving on over. We also have a vector screen that gives me a representation of the voltage and current. Right now I've only had one channel hooked up, so I'm looking at voltage and current in vector format. We have a history screen, which actually can be set up for long-term recording, which typically is not found on any other uh, power analyzers out there on the market today. I have a scope mode, which is going to give me which is going to give me the ability to look at um, my uh, however many traces, up to six traces at a time on the screen. Uh, right now I'm looking at my voltage and current waveforms. We have standby power measurements built in. Uh, there's a, um, a um, standby power standby standard uh, called EN50564, which now gives me the ability to monitor a piece of equipment when it's not powered up. So my amperage and voltage are going to be very, no, my voltage will be, um, will be high, but my amperage will be very low milliamp, microamp range, and you can do a standby power measurement. Lastly, I just want to touch real quick on the soft keys down at the bottom. This is my USB key. I have a, um, a USB jump drive installed in here so I can record data, store it on there. I can save configurations to there. I can put just harmonics on there, I can put um, my scope mode, my history data, all of these can be saved on my, on my memory stack. I have a shortcut key down here for my interface screens, which we saw before. Setting up my date and time. And integration, once I want to determine how many kilowatt hours I'm using, I can hit my stop screen start and stop screen, that will give me the ability to see uh, my total power consumption over a period of time. And lastly, the button down at the bottom here is my hold button. 
So I can stop my screen from jumping simply by hitting that measurement button. Again, thanks for watching our videos. If you require further information, please contact biketrek.com or click on the link you see here below.